Hello, everybody, and welcome to my tier list of Pikmin bosses. Yeah, that's right. You didn't expect me to be a Pikmin fan, did you? Did you? Okay, anyway, there are many, many Pikmin bosses. I don't even remember how many there are. I'll put a text box right there on the screen. Right there. Good. Yeah, right there. And out of all those bosses, I have 10 picks. And I'm not talking Pikmin. That would be generic. I wouldn't make a joke like that. Would I? I definitely would. I apologize. I'm so generic, it hurts. Help me. Okay, so I put this one in the top 10 spot because this is a technicality. I'm not sure if this is an actual boss or not, but it is considered a mini boss, so I'll just go with it and say the puff stool is number 10. What's the first thing you think of Pikmin 1 in terms of bosses? The armored cannon beetle? The smoky prog? Or is it the puff stool? This guy was prevalent in my childhood. Seriously, what's so unique? You spent all this time gathering Pikmin, and suddenly they turn against you after a bunch of spores have been dispersed in the air. And then they attack you. And then after they attack you and you're dead, they die. Like, that was like, mind-blowing to me as a kid. Like, dude, that is freaking cool. This guy was very prevalent in my Pikmin 1 playthroughs. I looked for him. Every time I played Pikmin 1, I looked for him just to see. Just to see the Puffman. Checking if my memories were true. Though so this might be just a biased, because uh, he isn't really all that special. You just hit him and he dies, and that's it. There are way other cool bosses in Pikmin 1, but honestly, the concept of just turning your Pikmin against you is just like, really cool for some reason. I hope we see that again in the future. So when you enter Pikmin 2, What's the first thing you expect to see? Was it the large amount of bugs you'd see? Was it the different varieties of bulb orbs and dwarf bulb orbs? Or was it a giant piece of bread with two legs and a face? Seriously, it's a piece of bread that waddles around the whole kitchen and just... He, do he doesn't even do anything. He just walks around. It's like... That is like, oh my god, a giant piece of bread is your enemy, but they don't do anything. It would take an insane amount of bad luck just to kill a Pikmin with this guy. Like in the Piclopedia, there's a Pikmin lost two, and I doubt anybody would have a one, or two, or ten. This guy just doesn't do anything. He just waddles around. Does nothing. And yes, I know how Pigman died to him. But like, come on. This guy isn't even a threat. He just waddles around. Does nothing. He's just in his own world. Like, have you seen that face? No thoughts, head up. And that's why he's number nine. Cause he's just so memorable is a piece of bread waddling and that's it <laughs> so with every top tier list people are always obliged to put a final boss here but which one do you think i'm talking about pikmin one's giant emperor bulblax pikmin three's plasm wraith 
Or is it the Titan Dweevil? It's the Titan Dweevil. I love this boss so much. He's like the personification of every cave that you've ever explored. You have your electricity, you have your poison, which is actually laughing gas. You have your water and you have your fire. You're supposed to use all four elements against this guy. And that's what you've been doing the whole game. That is such a neat concept. Like, what were you doing in Pikmin 1? Collecting ship parts. But what else? Nothing, really. You just have the final trial, which you're supposed to use two elements while yellow Pikmin get all the bomb rocks around the area. That's it. They don't really incorporate what you've been doing in the whole game. You just curb stomp another enemy and then they're dead and you get the last ship part. However, Pikmin 2 changes that format with its elemental types. With every cave, there's a label and you see the four elements there. Now you're fighting against a creature who's been using those elements against him. Not to mention his steam. It's so interactive. Like everything adds on and adds on and adds on. Like the more it damage you do. The theme gets more progressive. At first, it's blaringly loud, but not that blaringly loud. But then new instruments get added to it. Like I think a synth pad or a trumpet and all sorts of strings. Like, it is really cool. Pikmin 3, um, not sure. I'm hoping Pikmin 4 would do the same thing too. That's why the Titan Dweevil is number 8 on my list. Okay, so this isn't one boss, and it isn't two. It's all of the long legs. Like, the BD long legs, and it's, uh, four other cousins. I've always had a strange fascination with spiders and insects. And when it popped down on me on Pikmin 1, it was a delightful surprise. Though, to my mistake, I accidentally brought 100 Pikmin and left with 17. You're supposed to use, like, 20 underneath this guy. But, like, despite that, it's actually quite calming. Especially on Pikmin 2. He just stomped around peacefully. He doesn't even get mad. He just stomps and stomps. But it's relaxing. Pikmin 3 is a weird case. You have to crawl up his legs and not throw Pikmin onto it. And, I don't know, I just didn't really like that at the time. Because I liked just standing underneath it. With like 20 yellows and killing it. And just standing underneath him as you do it. You don't even move. You don't even have to move. Just stand in the middle. And that goes for all of his cousins. Except the man at legs. We'll get back to that one later. Like, I don't know why I like Pikmin 2 so much. The cave system? Or the bugs? I'm not sure yet. I guess it's just that I'm biased. And that is why all the long legs except... I said with mustard. Make it two. Mustard! mustard. mustard. Smoky Prog from Pikmin 1. Okay, you'll have to admit, this thing's pretty cool. Like, it had poison before Pikmin 1. You see that trail behind it? Yeah, that's poison. Immediate death. This creature is found 
when you break an egg in the middle of the distant spring. And for some godforsaken reason, all of my things, it's a Mimuta egg, but it's very, very wrong. Oh, uh, yeah, sure, bud, that's totally a Mimuta. Like, look at it. Like, the green skin, I think that skin, the glowing eyes. Yeah, that's definitely a Mimuta. Your eyes are wrong, Grandma. At least, that's what I think you would say. I'm not sure. I said with mustard. Make it too. Mustard. Mustard. mustard! This pick is rather self explanatory. I mean, it's more personal preference than anything, but. Damn it! It's funny! This is the Pileated Snagrit from Pikmin 2. Okay, so, the whole bird snake thing is pretty cool. They come out of the ground and you're like, Bleh! and then like, uh, come out, eat your Pikmin. I can never beat that guy. I can never beat Snagrits without losing Pikmin. I don't know. Speedrunners, please help me. I mean, what's the difference between the other Snagrits? It's orange. That's it. Right? Nope. There's a gosh darn foot. And I don't know, the foot's pretty funny. I mean, you see the way it hops around? Yeah. That's the only reason why it's on this list. Because I think Snagrits are cool. Shut up. Okay, a lot of you people will hate me, but the Scornet Maestro from Pikmin 3. God damn it. One of the easiest bosses in Pikmin 3 is. Just, look at it! Look at it! Oh my god! I love it! Look at it! Okay, so I'm gonna play some harp sound effects that plays throughout the fight. And oh my god! They're beautiful! I love this boss so much, it's like a queen bee, but it's also a bird, but it's also pom-pom. The designers must have a lot of fun with this, because... I love it so much! It's so pretty, the way it moves. The whole environment when you're up in a tree. Oh my god, I love everything about this boss. And a lot of people will hate me for it, but I don't care. This is my opinion in my video. Don't argue in the comments. Kick a bite, bye. So remember back in, I don't know what ranking it was, when we were talking about the BD long legs and their multiple cousins? Yeah, the bandit legs needs a separate ranking, cause, oh my god, have you seen the lore on it? Like, whoa. I don't even know what to say. It, it's a spider. With a gun? Clearly there's something wrong here, but I don't care. It's cool. And don't mind me, I'm just gonna read off the Piccolopedia entry real quick. Have fun. Manette Legs. Pseudoacnea Navarania. Arachnid family. 
This species of arachnid family fuses with machinery at a crucial point in its maturation process, giving it the ability to fire energy bursts from its launcher beneath its orbular torso. However, the manic legs itself is not in control of its weapon. Instead, the mechanical portions of its structure appear to automatically acquire and attack targets. The manic legs has a gentle disposition, and as a member of the Arachnid family, it has no natural enemies. Number two. This one speaks for itself. Just look at the intro. Yeah, you see that? It's an island. The biggest boss ever in Pikmin 3 is the Quaggled Mire Claw. Oh my god, this got me so bad when I first played it. Like, it drags itself across the land. Slamming into everything. All my pigment are drawn because I didn't know what to bring. I brought all my rocks because there was a crystal in the middle. And oh my god, huh, everybody's dying. Everybody's dying. What do I do? What do I do? Whoa. It's a nice, pleasant surprise to see that in a game so short. Yeah, pigment 3 is rather short. I, sorry. But like... An island? I was not expecting that. Wait, look at its tongue. What the hell? Oh, my God. And this is why it's number two on my list. Cuz. Wow. And finally, number... You guys knew what was coming. You didn't expect me not to talk about it. Yeah, that's right. The Gulix from Pikmin 1. I'm just kidding. I'm talking about every one of those. The Water Wraith, the Plasma Wraith, and the Gulix. If you count that one Umibozu theory. I refuse not to believe it. That theory is so real. Why else would it be doing all of this in a Pikmin game. So first off, you have the Gulix. Not that big of a deal, it's just a cell for some reason. You just throw your blue Pikmin in it. I mean, nobody can really die from it, right? Right? But then you get into Pikmin 2, another area where you're only supposed to have blues. You bring all your blues in, you think it's gonna have to be a good time? No. The Water Wraith is coming for you. It is coming, and it is fast, and it will kill everybody. Look at that. There's so many that were crushed. Look at that. All the carnage. And then you finally defeat it. Right? Since it turns purple and explodes. What's that thing doing there, then? This golden creature... I believe it's supposed to be the Water Wraith, but evolved, because, you know, that theory, I'll link to it in my description, stuff like that. You really need to watch it, because, good lord, when you first meet it, 
You see it like this. Yeah, it, it's it's really weird how it's doing that. But then you realize it's psychologically tormenting Olimar. It's not killing him like he would be in Pikmin 2. But bringing him up the tower, knocking him out and keeping him there. Why? Psychological torment. Olimar thinks he's going somewhere. No, he's not. Because, you know, that thing gets rid of all his hopes and dreams of ever seeing his family again. Psychological torment. How? look at the entry here. You can literally feel him giving up. Like, he's on the path of just losing his mind because he can't escape this thing. And like, my god. For a game this silly, that thing exists? What the hell? Thank God that Olimar gets saved in Pikmin 3, because good God. That must have felt terrible. Like feeling that you wouldn't see your wife or kids or even Bulby. You, you wouldn't see them again just because that thing's over you? Man, get out of here. You die already. Hold on a sec. Why are you still alive? What? He comes back to life so that whole effort was for nothing and Pikmin 4 is probably going to have hit him again? Unless this is the alternate universe where Ola actually dies. <laughs> Whoops. But I would love to see that in Pikmin 4 because I want that lower. In Pikmin 2? You see that? The Louie? The Louie notes of how to eat it? Why does he have internal thunderings? Why does it give him dread? What is in that that causes it? And that's about it. Thank you for watching my video. And, um... Eat some carrots, why don't you?